Stop thinking that you can just fix everything in the mix. If you want to have a great record, you got to have a great record. <laughs> What up, yo? This your boy, Wavy Wayne, back at you again in the lab. And today, we're going to take a, 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 a different approach at the Wavy Way tip of the day, all right? Now, we all want to make great records, and it seems that the most important part about this has been forgotten a little bit. It's been pushed to the side, and that's the recording process, right? This technology that we have has got us all messed up in the head, thinking that we can just fix everything with a plug in here, a little compression there, a little EQ there, a little auto-tune will fix all our problems. Well, you're wrong. All right. If you want that record to be as dope as possible, you got to start off making sure that you capture it in the best way possible. All right. Because um, ultimately, everything can't be fixed <laughs> in the mix. So today I've compiled a list of my top vocal producing tips. These are going to be tips that you can use while you are recording, um, whether you are an audio engineer or producer or songwriter or an artist yourself. You can actually take these tips into the studio with you and apply them to get a better vocal today. So let's just go ahead and jump right into my list. All right. Tip number one is to be a vocal actor. Now, Wavy Wayne, what do you mean be a vocal actor? Okay. Now, when you in that booth, nobody can see you. Nobody can see your movements. They wasn't there when you wrote this song. You need to make all of the emotion and feeling come across in your voice. Think about an actor, how when they um, are recording that, that part for that movie, that scene, right? They are emotionally into it, right? Their facial expressions, their body position, their movements. So being uh, recording a record is not just about what's coming out your mouth. If you uh, want to sound happy, smile while you're recording that record. If you are going through some um, emotional stuff, if it's an emotional record then dig, dig deep back into that place you were when you wrote that record or, or dot, tap into whatever emotion is going to help you to convey that because all of that um, uh, feeling and emotion needs to come across in your voice all right remember that recording a record is just like making a movie except instead of using your whole body and, and dialogue all you have is your voice okay so make sure that you are a vocal actor when you're in the booth. It's okay to step outside your comfort zone and uh, push yourself to uh, really get the feeling of that record across, okay? Vocal producing tip number two, be a part of the music. Now, I know a lot of us just grab these beats offline or, or, or we make a beat or somebody sent us a beat or whatever, and then we think about recording our vocals on top of that beat. Get that mindset out of here, okay? When you are recording a record, you want to be a part of the music. Your voice is another instrument that's being added to that musical bed. Now, as you are recording, think about that. Think about the role that your vocal instrument is going to play within the grand scheme of the music. All right. One thing that I encounter a lot is somebody just rapping or singing on top of the beat. They're not really conscious of what's happening, the nuances in the music. They just riding right on top of it. And when you do that, um, you, you're not really giving your best chance to, to make a project that meshes all together. So, you know, that's a huge tip right there. Be a part of the music. Don't be on top of the music. Um, even when you mix them, man, my mix engineers, you can take that tip as well. When you mixing your vocals in, you don't want that vocal to be sitting on top of the music. You want everything to be one. OK, so that vocal is an instrument. It is part of the music. Vocal production tip number three, man. Timing, timing, time. Timing. Timing is everything, all right? Timing is going to make the world of a difference, all right? When I and when I say timing, I'm talking about being in the pocket, all right? Like right there in the pocket. That means you're not too fast, you're not too slow, but sometimes you may need to 
have a rushed cadence. Sometimes you need to kind of pull back on the timing to kind of create a feeling, that, all right? But make sure you are conscious of your timing. Timing is everything. When you are delivering that, find something in that music that's gonna keep your timing. If you need to get a click track, because um, there isn't a lot of uh, percussion or uh, rhythmic activity happening in the music that you are recording over, then make sure that you go ahead and create a click track and use that as your timing reference. Timing is so important, so crucial when you are uh, delivering a vocal. You wanna be in that pocket, man. The pocket is such an important place to be in. <laughs> Stay in the pocket, please. Vocal production tip number four is going to be Overpronounce your words, overpronounce your lyrics, especially if you're doing R&B music and pop music. It may seem a little uh, extra, right? It may feel a little uncomfortable to really overpronounce all of the syllables and the words, right? But especially with rap, if you got a fast rap cadence, overpronouncing all the words will make it sound even better. If you slur those words together on a fast cadence, it's gonna sound sloppy. It's not gonna sound as fast as it really is, all right? So by just uh, making sure your pronunciation is correct, and I ain't talking about you gotta be proper, but just making sure that, um, you know, whatever the feeling of the song is, if it is a pop record, then make sure your pronunciation is proper. If it is, if, if that's the market you're going for, um, then, you know, you may need to pronounce certain words a little bit differently, all right? This is a record, so sometimes you need to even play with the pronunciation of the words in a way that you wouldn't normally say it in real life just to make it fit for the record, all right? Um, but really, uh, my main thing with that is uh, definitely on like hip hop vocals, fast rapping vocals, Make sure that y'all are pronouncing those words, man. If you are the producer or the engineer, tell that artist, listen, man, by, um, you know, you got this fast cadence or this flow. If you slur those words together, it's not going to sound as dope as it possibly could be. But if you really get every uh, syllable um, uh, and you hit every syllable right on point, then it's going to sound a whole lot cleaner, a whole lot better for that record. All right. So overpronounce your words. The next tip on vocal production is to remember that a record is all about feeling. You have to feel that performance, okay? So a lot of times what I'll do when I'm in the studio um, and I got my I got my artist in the booth or whatever because, you know, I, I am, I'm more than just an audio engineer. I'm also a producer. Then you know what? Let's address that real quick too. The difference between being an audio engineer and a producer is that the producer has the vision for the record. Now, my clients trust me to produce their records. Most of the time, they don't come in with a separate vocal producer, which is cool. They, some, they could, they should, um, but most of the times, they already know that Wavy Wayne going to produce that record when they come in here and I'm going to make sure that they get the best possible takes every time. Now, some engineers, they just want to record. They just want to sit there, record whatever the artist is giving them. And that's their job as an engineer. They don't, you, your job as an engineer is not always to be a producer. But if you want to elevate the experience, if you want to elevate what your uh, clients are getting from you, then you have to start producing them. You have to start helping them out and, and uh, letting them know like, hey, this is what I hear. Um, here's probably how things could be different. Now, that, that the trust has to be there. Your knowledge and experience should probably also be there. Um, um, if you are a new engineer, um, a new producer, you probably don't want to just jump out the window, you know, trying to tell people how to change their record and all of that. Um, but if they trust you enough and you trust yourself enough, then produce the record. Make sure that they are getting what they need to get done. OK, now let me get back to my uh, point. And my point is that the record is about a feeling. OK, now. Often, I, when I get, when after we record a take and the artist is like, yo, Wayne, how that sound? I reply to them, how did it feel? Okay? Major key. How did it feel? Because if it was right, you would feel it. We don't really got to listen back to it all the time because I'm not necessarily checking for perfection and, and, uh, and uh, pitch and, and lyric and timing, right? Because we can go back and fix those spots that need that correction. It's still in the recording, right? We can go back and punch in or, or do whatever. But as a whole take, how did it feel? 
Were you emotionally involved in that take? Were you giving it your all? Was you thinking about each line and what it means as you delivered it? How did it feel? And if it felt right, then it is right. And then if we need to, we can go back and do whatever corrections and small tweaks that we need to, but make sure the feeling is there, right? Because we can fix a lot of stuff. I can fix pitch, I can fix timing, but I cannot fix feeling. This next tip is gonna be exclusively for my engineers and my producers, okay? Um, make sure that you adjust your equipment for the needs of your artists. If you get in there and, and your artist is too loud, don't tell them to, to be quiet, right? Unless that's the need for the record. But if the record needs them to be loud and they just clip it, adjust your preamp, right? Adjust that, move the microphone back, do whatever you need to do to get the signal um, uh, clean and still allow the artist to be as expressive as they need to be. If they're too quiet, turn your gain up, right? Um, again, these are choices that you need to make as a producer whether you need to tell the artist to change or if you need to change. And most of the time, it's going to be you as the engineer who needs to uh, 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 make adjustments to your gear um, and, and not change the way that the artist is performing. And another, another vocal producing tip is going to be to make sure that when you are doubling up parts of the song, that the doubles are clean. Man. Nothing ruins a record faster than some sloppy doubles, okay? So if you got to do those doubles over 50, 100 times, if the whole point of it is to sound like it's in unison, make sure that it sounds like it in unison, okay? If you probably need to play back the, uh, you probably need to play back the, the original a couple of times so that the artist can uh, hear that and get a feel for it and then go ahead and do the doubles and, and then play that back so they can be reminded again and then double it again or whatever, right? Oftentimes, this is a little trick what I'll find is, um, especially if a hard, if an artist is having a hard time um, uh, completing their doubles, then what I'll do is actually set them up uh, uh, to be like, you know what? Okay, that first take is good. And then we'll we'll go ahead and, and do the double. And then I just keep having them do it over and over and over again. Like, okay, cool, let's double that. Okay, good, now let's double that. And eventually, that brain is gonna get wore down, right, to they're gonna stop doing these changes and they'll eventually start falling, they'll fall into the pattern and fall into the cadence and the, the rhythm that they need to have and then they'll be able to consistently uh, reproduce that. Now, if you just take that first take, they're not sure what they did, they probably can't uh, 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 reproduce it again. So um, oftentimes when I need to double something, I'll take out like the third take that the artist has given me and then we'll double that and go from there. Oftentimes that'll be the most solid, that'll be the, the take that they can actually um, do over and over again. So make sure your doubles are clean. The next vocal production tip is gonna be to use the microphone as an instrument. Now, if you ever watch videos of great musicians in the studio, you will see them actually playing with the microphone, right? Remember, the proximity to the microphone changes its, um, its uh, uh, what, what do you call it? It changes its uh, um, uh, pickup. It, it changes the way that microphone captures the audio. So by you being closer to the microphone, you know, we get that proximity effect. And then, you know, the low frequencies are enhanced there, right? When we further away from the microphone, things seem to sound quieter, right? Because there's space in between there. There's more air or whatever, you know? So there's, there's a whole bunch of ways that the artist can play with the microphone. So this one is specifically for the artists out there and for um, even the engineers. You, you need to coach your artists and teach them about this stuff. Um, as an engineer, often you're going to be teaching your artists how to record. What's the best ways to get the, the perfect take? Um, one thing that I, that I, I like to do, you know, uh, one simple um, way to play with the microphone and use it as an instrument is when, you know, when your artist is getting, uh, uh, when they have an intimate section, something that, that they quieter on and they, and they need to get, you know, more up close to the microphone, have them get closer to the mic for that intimate section. When you belting out, then back away from the microphone, turn your head back up a little bit. You know what? Those little things. Hey, hey. Those things make a big difference in the record, all right? So you can not only um, uh, play with 
um, your, your vocal and delivery, but you can change the way that the microphone is picking you up by moving around and interacting with the microphone in different ways. So you may need to advise your artist to move a little bit in the booth as they are recording. The next tip is to actually have a vocal producer come into your recording session with you. If you're gonna be recording vocals, especially for my singers and rappers too, man, we can always use an extra pair of ears, especially someone who has knowledge of uh, creating records and, and, you know, and mixing records and recording. Somebody with that knowledge in the studio to help you along your process is going to be crucial, right? So if there is somebody in there to say, you know what, I wasn't feeling that take, let's deliver it like this. Maybe you should say that line this way, all right? All those different things, having somebody in the studio with that kind of ability is going to be crucial to you getting a dope sounding record, all right? You as an artist, you're already thinking about so much as you in the booth, and you can't always hear how you're coming across, right? You feeling one thing, but is your message being conveyed to other people? Because ultimately, um, when you're recording, that's what you want. You want that whatever you do in the booth, you want people to feel you. You want people to understand where you're coming from. So by having that check, that balance in the place, right? Them checks and balances, having those in place um, during your recording session, it's going to ensure that you get the performance that you need. Another vocal producing tip is going to be for the artist to actually use their voice as an instrument, right? Remember, your voice is an instrument. So if that means adding harmonies and backgrounds and ad-libs and, and other creative sounds to enhance the production, right? The production isn't over until the final mix is done. So if you feel like, you know, there should have been a trumpet or something in the mix, add a, a, a harmony, a vocal line that, that, that has that. And for my, all my producers out there, Remember that there is still another element that needs to come on top of your beat that you making um, to actually finish it. So don't fill the beat up so much with so much crap that the uh, that the vocalist doesn't have any room to play with and add their own secret sauce up in the mix. You feel me? And the last thing, everybody, this is for my artists, for my engineers, for the producers, be patient. Remember that recording is a process. Um, we're not expecting anybody to come in the booth and get your track done in one take, right? If we have to go line by line by line, man, I've been in a studio with Dr. Dre and he's having artists record line for line for line, punching in till we get it right, right? Now, obviously his production mind, his vision for that record is very clear. He knows exactly what he wants to get out of that artist. And as you guys grow, you'll start to, um, you know, have a clear picture of what you want to get each time that you record. Right. But I say this to say is that the record is forever. When it, when it's down on wax, when it's, when it's out in, in, in the world and being streamed, that final project product is going to be out there forever. So we might as well take our time in the studio, be patient with each other and get it right. Get it as close to perfect as we can. If not, just go ahead and make it perfect, baby. <laughs> so, those are my vocal production tips, man. That's the wavy way for show. And I use these every time I'm in the studio. If you can think of any more vocal production tips, be sure to leave a comment. Make sure you like this video and subscribe if you found this helpful. Also, check out wavywayne.com. Not only can you get uh, mixing templates and recording templates, fly pro tools and, and mixing recording shirts like the one I'm rocking right now, that dot wave shirt. Come on now, who don't want to get wavy with me, all right? You can also get mixing services and, and you got my, all my pricing and all of that stuff is right up online at wavywayne.com. So go ahead, check out the site, man. Thanks for watching this video today. And you already know. Boom, <laughs> boom.